the pandemic was almost like going through the stages of grief where it's like, you know, at first you're just like almost in disbelief and then you're angry. And then I totally feel like that. I feel like I've run through every emotion this year. Like at first it was this year was kind of was meant to be my busiest year in terms of work. I had stuff booked like quite far ahead and my business had really grown and I was feeling so excited about it. And then this hit and I felt like someone just ripped it all away from me. And I was like really angry and frustrated and thinking like, yeah. oh, like, why did I go, you know, full-time self-employed? Like <laughs> that was a stupid move. I should have kept my job and I'd be on furlough yeah. kind of thing. Um, and then from there, it kind of just morphed into like a little bit of, I guess, being thankful for having like time to reflect on what I want to do or what direction I want the business to move in or the fact that, you know, I am lucky in a lot of ways. I have a partner who had a full-time salary job and was able to keep working. Whereas I know lots Mm -hmm. of other photographers who are maybe like a husband and wife team or they rely, you know, maybe they're on their own and they rely solely on that income. So yeah, every, every emotion in the book, I feel like I felt it this year, probably everyone. Yeah. Yeah. It's totally, that's such a good point way to put it. Like it's a process that you have to go through, like feeling angry and like, I know you were saying that in your episode about burnout, like, you finally felt that like you were at a place in your business where it was, like, kind of calm and, like, everything was sort of working out. And then it's just, like you say, it just gets blown to bits. <laughs> so it's scary how quickly that can happen. I know. And I think that's why it's so hard to plan for 2021. So, like... I don't know, I still do some wedding and family photography as well. So from that perspective, almost all of the weddings that I had booked for this year, there were a few that went ahead with really reduced numbers, but they've almost all pushed back to next year. Plus I've got some bookings for next year and then I've got some brand stuff lined up for early in the year. So if I look at next year right now, it looks quite promising, but I'm very aware that like, we don't know what's going to happen. And with this whole, like whatever side of the argument you're on with the, you know, seeing people at Christmas, you know, that there's going to be loads of people that take advantage of that, have big New Year's parties and all that. And then like, I find it really hard to believe that we're not going to be back into like a tier four lockdown again in January, February. I hope we're not, but I'm not holding my breath. I know as it's weird. it's hard because like we've got this far and like the end's like so in sight well almost but you have that fear still that it's just all gonna blow up again you know how quickly things can just go to pot I think maybe the one saving grace is that we've all had to learn to be a bit more adaptable and we've all had to learn to be a bit more I guess spontaneous in a way and just find a way to pivot when we need to so at least we've had a bit of practice with that now so if it does happen it's not like you know totally unprecedented but the idea of like you know having to rethink everything again just seems overwhelming and exhausting I feel like I don't have the energy to go through all that again I know and I know you were talking about that as well in your episode um like you thought the second lockdown would be fine because like we've been through it before like it's we know what's happening but it kind of it still hit you hard didn't it like you had harder restrictions than we did so we didn't have it too bad but it was still a three I think we were three yeah I think we were two and then we went to three but you were like you just couldn't go anywhere really could you (laughs) no and I think like what I really feel for is, so I stay in Finiston in Glasgow, which is like pretty much all independent businesses. It's not as gentrified as the rest of the West End. Like there's, you know, there's no Starbucks. There's no, it's a little bit more independent, like gift shops and cafes and restaurants. So in speaking to like other small business owners that actually have premises and stuff, they were a bit like, as if we have to shut again after we've spent all this time and money and like trying to make everything safe and it's not even so much just for me but like my surroundings and worrying like I don't want all these local places to shut I mean not even partly from a selfish reason of you know I love going to all these places but so many businesses like you said before have you know have gone under because of this or are really struggling to get by and you just wonder like how are they going to do it again I know it must be so exhausting for them to have to like you say, completely pivot their business and then not know, they just get back to normal and then not know when it's going to have to change again. It's, I don't envy them at all. I feel so bad for like the hospitality mm-hmm. world. I know it's, um, yeah, it's just a little bit, I guess it kind of puts things in perspective on the days where I'm feeling really discouraged, you know, not, you know, yeah. not to use everybody else's misery to make myself feel better, <laughs> but just 
it made yeah. me realize that like in the grand scheme of things I'm going to be okay I got rid of my studio like long before the lockdown ever happened because I just wasn't using it for the kind of work I do I'm mostly on location anyways but yeah yeah it's just um I don't know like how are you feeling about next year are you feeling quite positive or are you a little bit skeptical as well I, I don't know I'm feel. I think I'm feeling pretty good because because I've not been that affected and like thankfully the businesses that I do like social media for haven't really been too badly affected like some of them have actually kind of ended up doing better like they're in that camp like they've done so well because of this but so I've, I feel like I'm feeling pretty positive but there's just always that it's more for like personal life I think that you worry it's just when can we get back to some kind of normality and like see people and when can I just pop into my mum and dad's with like worrying <laughs> but yeah I know I know it's really hard like my family is back in Canada and this was the year that we were supposed mm. to come back for Christmas so like we can't you know yeah the last time we were back for Christmas was 2017 I think and when we had first moved to Scotland we were like right we'll trade off year to year and then that just didn't work out it's so much more expensive to fly at Christmas and this year we were like right this is the year we're gonna do it and then obviously this happened so from a personal Uh... standpoint it's hard not to feel down about that kind of stuff but then on the other side of that I FaceTime my mom and dad every Sunday so like Mm. you know my kid knows her grandparents, even though they don't live here, because we talk to them every week. And I mean, we can do the same at Christmas. Realistically, we're going to yeah. be FaceTiming Paul's family who are a 15 minute drive, you know, because we're not yeah. going to get together at Christmas either. So right now, I guess it's not that different. Even people whose family live like just down the road are going to be talking to them the same way that I'm talking to my mom and dad. So it, you kind of, yeah. it makes me feel less alone, I guess, in dealing with that this year. Yeah. I th- we're so lucky to have like the technology we do for like that reason and even like for our podcasts and for like meetings client meetings like imagine doing this with, with zoom <laughs> it would be it would be so much worse I know and it is like you know I've seen a few people speaking about like zoom fatigue and how exhausting it is and I mm-hmm. think that's a thing like everybody's thankful to have it but so like my PT has been doing her sessions via zoom And she was saying that, um, you know, so the way her day works, because she obviously works around people's work schedules is like, she gets up and she has clients for like three or four hours in the morning. And then she has a gap, which she tends to like, I think she does a lot of work in that gap. She does like a lot of the sort of marketing and and admin stuff. And then she goes back and works like four till eight or nine or whatever it is. But now instead of seeing people in person and like getting that energy off them, she's Mm -hmm. having to do it through a screen and she was saying like I'm so thankful I can still work but at the same time it's really hard because it's a totally different dynamic than face to face yeah I know it is strange and I I think I don't know if you find this but when you're oh no you never done podcasts face to face did you because you started and during this because I do miss like go like I used to go to Glasgow all the time and I would like have all my my microphone packed in my bag and like go and meet in coffee shops and like actually get to meet people so I do miss that but yeah because you were you were doing pretty much all of your face to face like you were kind of traveling to to meet with people and see them face to face I've only ever done one face to face and it was in between when we were allowed to meet again so I'm the girls that uh, started I'm gonna say it wrong Kreuzberg I think I'm right chocolate um I met them face to face at the same cafe that you and I met at um they had one table open and so we booked the table and had our interview and it was so nice to do it face to face but um yeah Yeah. that did not last long because now we're back to this again I know so do you think like when this kind of goes back to normal do you think you'll start doing them face to face I guess it depends on what becomes normal because there are probably some people that will want to do face to face again, but then you've got some people that love the fact that everything's through through video calling now. So I imagine it'll depend. And then it depends on where people are too, because I don't know if travel restrictions will like how long that will last. So, I mean, you and I are in different places. I could probably meet and interview someone else in Glasgow, but what about if I wanted to talk to someone in Fife or Edinburgh or I imagine Mm -hmm chances are I might still have to do that via zoom yeah I know I felt like at the start of this I was just waiting until like I was allowed to meet people again and I was like oh as soon as I can like I'll stop doing these zoom ones and now it just feels so normal I'm like will I just go back to doing like face to face I don't know it's just 
I think it just, it, we'll just have to see how it unfolds, but I don't mm-hmm. know, like I'm a total extrovert and I get my energy off other people. So I find mm-hmm. it really tough. Like I, I also find this really tiring and I'm not doing it. You know, Miriam's like whatever she is, seven or eight hours of it a day. I'll maybe have mm-hmm. a couple of calls a day. Um, mm-hmm. so it's not that bad, but I uh, know I miss meeting people in person and I feel like it's mm-hmm. a little bit less nerve wracking like from people that are maybe nervous to go on a podcast or nervous to have their photo taken and we're doing like their their sort of strategy session and their planning sessions ahead of time meeting people in person helps calm them whereas I feel like over the computer it's a bit not awkward but do you know what I mean it's not the same yeah I think there's definitely I find it more awkward on zoom I don't know why I think because I know you've been doing networking haven't you so has that been on zoom because I've been yeah. too scared to do Zoom networking because I just feel like there'll be that awkward like delay and oh I don't know it scares me. <laughs> do you know what like I wasn't doing it for the first while I was like I'm not doing it I don't think it's for me um, and then I spoke to a few people who were like just give it a go like try it once and if you hate it don't do it again yeah. and I've done quite a few now so there's no ties networking which is actually Edinburgh based um, but I know a few of the women that that run it or take part in it. So I do that one. That's once a month. And that's fine. It doesn't actually feel that weird. But I had never been to the event pre-Zoom. Like they used right. to be in person yeah. and they would all get lunch and then have this. Um, but it's actually okay because a lot of them have it set up where like somebody does a um, like a presentation almost about what they do or a topic relating to running a business. And then mm. go into breakout rooms. So it's not as awkward as I thought, but I would still pick a face-to-face one any day. Yeah. Yeah, I think it, like, I was just sort of getting into networking before this happened. Like, I kind of forced myself to do it, and I was going to, like, face-to-face ones, and then, obviously, we had to stop, and I've just, I feel like I've lost my, like, I'll be, like, so nervous to go back and start doing it again. You probably won't. I think like it might be weird again, like the first couple of times and then you'll just get Mm. used to it. But I think so many people are just going to be so relieved that stuff can actually happen again, that it'll just be a really nice feeling. I hope, I hope it doesn't feel super awkward. I know. It's just so strange to even think about going back to that, like being in a group, like a room full of like 20 people, 20, 30 people. Like it just doesn't, it feels like it's bad against the wall. (laughs) I know I was, I was speaking to somebody the other day and they were saying like um they organize uh like markets not Christmas markets but you know like small business kind of markets and she was saying like they've just done their first um online one and how much work and stuff went into it but how different it was than the feel of like you know actually walking through a market and seeing everything physically set up like it's just it's a weird thing to get used to and I think for a lot of people we never thought to work this way before like I was speaking to a girl who is a a dog behavioralist so she deals with it's a bit different than training she actually deals with like you know dogs that have problems or the issues are rising with them and she was saying that before this she never thought to do online sessions she always just thought I'll go and meet with the person like in their home or their local park or whatever but Mm. now she has like a bunch of clients down south in England and I think she said she has one all the way over in New Zealand and like she never would have had those clients if it weren't for the pandemic because she never would have bothered figuring out how to do stuff online so in that sense I guess it's maybe opened some opportunities for people, but then other people, yeah. obviously it's shut doors. So it's, yeah. I think everyone's circumstance is just so different. I know. I know. And even like you say, like Christmas markets or like online markets, you would never have thought of that before. But like I've seen some huge ones going on and like they've went so well and people have got involved. And I think everyone this year is kind of championing the small businesses and they want to be shopping small and like it's more important than ever really. Yeah, I totally agree. I think, you know, more and more people are making a real effort. So even for myself, like I've always tried to support small and local first when it comes to like buying gifts for people or even like things for myself. Like I'd rather buy a pair of earrings that are handmade than like some mass produced crap that everybody has. But there were a lot of things I wasn't thinking about. Like we would just go and do like a shop every couple of days at like the corner store whereas Mm -hmm. now we get like a veg delivery 
um, and mm-hmm. we get a fish delivery and things like that from small businesses. So it made me almost feel a bit guilty because I was thinking like we could have been doing this for years and we really only yeah. started now. 